Welcome to Amazing Facts Ministries Canada. We hope you enjoy today's topic by our international speaker, Doug Batchelor, as he presents a message that's completely Bible-based. Tonight we're going to talk about God's health plan. Health plan's in the news a lot in our country right now. And uh, I'll tell you that the health plan in North America could be alleviated in one year if people could hear what I'm sharing with you. I'm not exaggerating. You'll see why I'm saying this in just a moment. There is a prophecy connection, actually, with health. Daniel is a book of prophecy. First chapter in the book of Daniel deals with something regarding health and diet and feeling better and thinking better. Number one, are the health principles really part of Bible religion, of true Bible religion? Listen to what it says in 3 John, the third letter of John, chapter 2. Beloved, I'm sorry, verse 2, there's only one chapter. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God wants us to prosper in our bodies and in our souls. Jesus said this, he went about teaching, he went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now Jesus did a lot of teaching and preaching, but what else did he do in connection with that teaching and preaching? And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So Christ did almost as much healing as he did preaching. Does the Lord care about our physical health? Isn't it kind of hard to be spiritual when you feel sick? It's a lot easier to be a witness for the Lord when you feel good. I mean, if all Christians were constantly sick and tired, who wants to be a sick and tired Christian? Christians ought to be attractive not just because of our theology, but I think that God's given us some information where our vessels can be healthier. No, I believe in miraculous healing. I believe that Jesus can just touch a person and heal them. But I also believe that God sometimes does things in degrees. I believe God uses doctors and modern medicine. Jesus sometimes held people, healed people by he put mud on their eyes, and one time he healed a man who was blind kind of in degrees. First he um, could see a little bit, but things were fuzzy. Men were like trees. Then they could, he, he went after them one more time. They could see clearly. So sometimes God uses time. When Hezekiah was sick, um, Isaiah was sent with a poultice of figs. God said, lay this poultice on the boil. And so God gave him a medicinal treatment, and he was miraculously healed. So, you know, God uses these different things, but also the best, most miraculous healing is your own body. If we cooperate with the basic laws of health in God's word, we would really help ourselves heal and live longer and feel better. But most people don't know what those simple principles are. And so we're going to share some of that. Number two, why did God give us health rules in the Bible? Why does he give health rules to his people? Deuteronomy 6, verse 24. And the Lord God commanded us to do all these statutes for our good always. It's for our benefit, that he might preserve us alive. Do any of you have any health rules for your kids if you've got children? You know, you're not supposed to stick things in the electric socket. That's a health rule. Uh, you can get hurt doing that. So God loves his children too, and he's got some health basics for us. It says, and you shall serve the Lord your God. This is Exodus 23, 25. And he'll bless your bread and your water, and I'll take sickness away from the midst of thee. The Lord promised to bless them if they would serve him, and he would take away sickness if, he'd, if they would follow his word. Well, after he led them out of Egypt, and they had been doing kind of what the Egyptians did and eating what the Egyptians ate, God then put them in a controlled environment for 40 years in the wilderness where God provided their bread, he provided their food, he provided their water, and after those 40 years of going through the wilderness, eating God's food and drinking God's water, the Bible says that when he brought them forth, they came out with silver and gold. Notice this. After that 40 years of wandering, it says in Psalms 105, 37, there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Well, that'd really be something if you had a group of one and a half to two million people. They had 900,000 soldiers. Imagine women and children, at least one and a half, two million people, not one sick person, no infirmary, nurses, doctors all out of work. 
Wouldn't that be wonderful? Would that solve the health problems? Not one sick person, two and a half million. Number three, do God's health rules have anything to do with eating and drinking? Let's read some scripture. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Does, does that stand to reason that if it's possible to eat and drink to the glory of God, is it possible to not eat and drink to the glory of God? Does that make sense to you? And so some people, what they're eating and what they're drinking is not to the glory of God. They're, they're hurting themselves with their diet. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, eat that which is good. Why would God say that? Because they're eating that which is what? They're eating that which is bad. And so he's having to say, eat that which is good. That not only applies to physical food, it applies to spiritual food. Some people eat the wrong kind of spiritual food and they get the wrong kind of uh, information. Number four, what did God give people to eat? In the, in the beginning, what was his original plan for man? When he created them and he provided the perfect diet. You read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you. It shall be for meat. The word meat there is like the meat of a nut. It means food. That's the King James Version. A lot of modern versions there says it will be for you food. So the original diet for man was fruits, grains, nuts, uh, a vegetarian diet was the original diet. Even after man sinned and God said he could no longer eat from the tree of life, Adam and Eve were evicted from the Garden of Eden, he then added something else to their diet. It says, now you shall eat the herb of the field. They, maybe there was some enzyme or something missing from that tree of life and they needed this additional part of the diet. That's vegetables. Now you understand the difference between a fruit and a vegetable. I, most of my life I didn't know I thought that like zucchini were vegetables. Well, zucchini is actually the product of a flower. The product of a flower, tomatoes are not vegetables, tomatoes are fruits. Uh, eggplant, I mean, very rarely does your kid come in for a snack and say, can I have a piece of fruit? And you toss them an eggplant. <laughs> but eggplant technically are fruits. Vegetables are any part of the plant other than the fruit of the flower, meaning leaves, stalk, the roots, bulbs, they're the vegetables. Again, that's distinct from the nut. A nut is a seed of the plant. So the original diet for man was fruits, grains, nuts, vegetables. And on this diet, man did pretty good. Lived a long time. The principles are very simple. They're biblical. Fresh air. They got a lot of that in Hunza. Up there in the foothills of the Himalayas. Clean water. Exercise. They are out there working in the fields. Uh, trust in divine power. Having faith. Um, sunshine. Now, you have too much sunshine. They tell you sunblock, and you know, we, we know the limitations, but you get vitamin D from the sun. It's not all bad. People need a certain amount of sunshine for their bodies to process things. And these are just a handful of nutrition, eating the right kind of food. And the water is on the inside and on the outside. Cleanliness. Rest, having, you know, stress is killing people. All these things together, if we do them right, will promote long life. You've probably heard about some of the dangers with meat and packing and E. coli and different diseases, and I'm sure you're aware of these things. No doubt you've heard about mad cow disease, and um, I don't know if you've heard that they even said now mad pig disease. And the H1N1 flu is better known as who knows what? Swine flu. And now they've found, they've identified in North America anyway, they've even found some pigs that have been infected by people, which is pretty scary because that's when a pandemic begins to, our virus mutate one more time and it can develop a very virulent strain. Some of you might be thinking, Pastor Doug, uh, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Anybody knows that the humans are supposed to eat meat. I mean, our bodies are designed. That's why we've got these canine teeth up here is because that's because we're meat eaters. There was big old canine teeth. That is ludicrous. Here's some canine teeth for you. <laughs> and by the way, he's a vegetarian. <laughs> and the biggest canine teeth in the world are on elephants and hippos, and they're vegetarians. And so you're going to hear all kinds of goofy things. Oh, you can't, you don't get enough protein. If you, if you don't eat meat, you're going to be malnourished. 
Oh, nonsense. Do you know peanut butter jelly sandwich? Do you guys do that here? Peanut butter and jelly sandwich has got all the basic foods in it right there. If you've got good strawberry preserves. There's all kinds of myths and rumors you're going to hear, and that's just what it is. I'm going to be giving you some scientific data on that in a minute, but I've got to hurry along here. Number five, what are some of the items specifically mentioned by God as being unclean and forbidden? Now, the Bible did say that man can eat meat. Uh, especially after the flood, God made a provision that man could eat what they call clean animals. So he made a distinction between the clean and the unclean animals. He said, Leviticus 11.3, whatever parts the hoof, cloven hoofed, and chews the cud, uh, they could eat that. It needed both criteria, a cloven hoof and chew the cud, you know, like a, a sheep or a goat or a cow. That was technically a clean animal. Any animal, by the way, that was also clean for sacrifice was clean to eat. Only clean animals were, could be used as a sacrifice in the temple. Then God made a criteria for the sea creatures of what was safe to eat. There was a clean and an unclean in the oceans. Leviticus 11.9 He said, These you shall eat of all that are in the waters. Whatever in the waters has fins and scales, them you shall eat. Now that means that it needed both criteria. Sharks got fins, but it has no scales. They're scavengers. God does not want us eating the scavengers. The crabs and lobster that crawl along on the bottom, I used to eat lobster, I used to catch my own lobster. And oh, it was yummy. By the way, if you eat lobster, you may as well check into the hospital and ask for an IV drip and fill it with cholesterol. Because it's just a pure, it's almost pure cholesterol, shrimp and lobster. Um, and uh, oysters and all that, they're scavengers. They live at the bottom. They, the way they catch them is they put something dead and decomposing in a cage and it attracts them all. So if you think that's gross to eat something dead and decomposing, but if you're eating the garbage can that eats the dead and decomposing stuff, that's not a lot better. And you know, shrimp is one of the only things that people eat with the digestive system of it still intact. It's kind of ucky when you think about that. So it's interesting that the U.S. Navy, uh, they did a study during World War II, a lot of pilots were shot down in the Pacific. And they were out in the oceans and just starving. And uh, they wanted to know what can we eat and what can't we eat, because they had all kinds of critters that would sometimes gather around the life raft. And they did a study, and you know what they came up with after probably a million tax dollars? The scientists said, well, we've decided that the best rule of thumb, if it has fins and scales, it's probably safe. Isn't that interesting? Spent all that money to support what the Bible said in Leviticus. That means that the typical shellfish, the sharks, uh, the uh, lobster and um, crabs, the scavengers, they're, they're unclean according to the Bible. And among the birds, how do you, what's the criteria? We talked about the animals, we talked about the fish. Among the birds it says, every raven after its kind, the owl and the night hawk and the cuckoo and the hawk after its kind, they were unclean. What they could eat was the foraging birds. Now a foraging bird would be like a pheasant, a turkey, technically a dove is clean. You know, remember they offered dove in the temple. It's like a quail. But uh, the, the other animals were unclean. God said, you don't touch them, you don't eat them. Now I know some of you are thinking, Pastor Doug, why, wh what's that going to mean? And like among the mammals, is there a mammal that has a cloven hoof but it doesn't chew the cud that's very popular? You know what it is? Pig, hog, swine. That's right, very popular. You know, most of this, you don't have any problem with it. Do you know the Bible says you can't eat skunk? Does that bother anybody? The Bible says you can't eat camel. Camel chews the cud, but they don't have a cloven hoof. So I hope when you go home, you're going to take that camel steak out of your refrigerator. <laughs> you're not worried about that. As long as I'm not stepping on your toes, you don't care. You say, that's right, amen. No more vulture. Can't eat any more vulture. <laughs> you don't care. Oh, by the way, a kangaroo? Ah. Uh -huh. I don't know, they chew the cud, but they don't have a cloven hoof, do they? Unclean. Got to get that kangaroo. <laughs> Some of you are thinking, but I like pork. Will God destroy me if I eat pork? Am I going to be in trouble if I eat something the Bible says is unclean? You don't want to know what I think. You want to know what God thinks, right? Let's find out what the Bible says about this. Isaiah 66, verse 15, and verse 17. Listen. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury. Talking about the coming of the Lord. They that sanctify themselves and they purify themselves, they say, we're pure, we're sanctified, we're holy. 
eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse will be consumed together, says the Lord. So he's talking about people that say, oh, you know, I can do whatever I want. I'll just pray over it and, and uh, it'll be holy. I've sanctified it. Notice it lumps rats and mice and pig in the same category in this verse. Uh, some countries eat rats, don't they? Don't mean to be critical, but I want it. <laughs> One reason pig is especially dangerous is because, well, pe- pigs are... I always look for some new word to explain it, but I can never come up with anything better than to say, wow, they're pigs. I fed them before. My neighbor left once and said, could you take care of my farm for me? And I had to feed his pigs and milk his cows. And the milking wasn't so bad, but the, man, those pigs, they'll eat any, they'll eat each other. They've been known to eat kids that fell in the sty before. I mean, they're, they're scavengers. They're smart. I'm not talking about if you want one as a pet and walk it on a leash like a dog. Pigs are actually in the same categories as dogs in the Bible. Did you know that? Often when pigs are mentioned, it says you don't give that which is holy to the dogs and you don't cast your pearls before swine. It says a dog returns to its vomit and a pig to wallowing in the mire. It always lumps dogs and pigs together because they're scavengers. We're not supposed to eat them. The Bible says God isn't mocked. Don't, Don't deceive yourself that you can eat anything and there's no consequences. You know better that it does matter what you eat. And it will affect your health. And the very things in the Bible God said we're not supposed to eat are because they're bad for us. National Geographic, November 2005. Article about living longer. National, how many of you saw this article? They studied three very unusual groups around the world that live longer than other people. And they didn't pick the people in Hunza. They picked the people in Okinawa. They picked... The people in Sardinia, I've been to these places, and Seventh-day Adventists in Loma Linda, California. And they were especially intrigued with the Seventh-day Adventists because it wasn't at all genetic. The people in Sardinia were on an island, it was genetic. The people in Okinawa, there was a little bit of genetic influence there. But the people in Loma Linda were from all different races and backgrounds, but Seventh-day Adventists were living longer, men more than nine years longer than the national average, women 6.1 years longer than the national average, and they attribute it to a large percentage of Seventh-day Adventists are vegetarian, not all, and they believe in resting. The Sabbath, I think, contributes to that. They believe in family, and faith has something to do with it. Exercise, service to others, I think you give your life away, you bless and serve others, God blesses you back. But... uh, It was on national news. So it does make a difference. They follow the biblical diet. What are some of the very simple yet important health principles, health laws found in the Bible? I'm going to race through a series of principles. The Bible teaches not only certain health laws. Some things are simple, you know, like red light, green light. Do it and don't do it. Then there are health principles. Very simply, animal fat should not be eaten. Or blood, by the way. Do you know the Bible teaches that? And yet so much of our food is, it's not just the animal fat, a lot of our food is deep fried in animal fat. And uh, people, some people say, oh, well, save the fat for me. I mean, they just, they crave that. Now, there is something where people crave fat. And um, you know, God even describes the promised land as a land flowing with milk and honey. Because, you know, people were, were craving that cream. That's what ice cream is. It's the pure fat of the milk. But if you eat a lot of fat, you get fat. Hatred. Some people are sick, not because of what they're eating, but because of what's eating them. They're angry, they're bitter, they won't forgive somebody, and they're destroying their health with this. It really, it's proven, friends, it does affect your health if you go around nurturing a grudge and angry and bitter through your life. So learn to forgive. Unload, cast your cares upon the Lord. Overeating is harmful. Even of the best food, you can eat too much. Matter of fact, we're living in, right now, a culture that is overnourished. Our bodies need proper rest. All the stress, that's one reason the Lord gives us the Sabbath. When God uh, made Adam, he didn't make him to just sit in a hammock under a tree. He said, I've made you to dress and to keep the garden. He was made to be active. And God wants us to use our bodies. You, anything you don't use, you lose. He wants you to use your mind. They found that mental activity and challenges and stuff actually prevents uh, degeneration and uh, Alzheimer's. 
um, using your muscles, using your body, it'll prolong the vitality of your system. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's also true in your relationship with the Lord. You've got to use your faith. A positive attitude, be happy. Laugh. You know, you know that I like to laugh. Even covering serious subjects like this, you can have fun. Life's already serious enough. You've got to learn to be happy and to laugh. And sometimes you've got to laugh at yourself. And you can't take everything personally. Have a good attitude. Smile. They say it takes fewer muscles. What solemn reminder is given to those who ignore God's rules? 1 Corinthians 3, 16. You are the temple of God. If any man defiles the temple of God, him will God destroy. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. God made your body. He owns you because he redeemed you. He owns you because he created you. How many of you want a new body when Jesus comes? You better take care of the one he gave you. If you want to trade this one in on a newer model. <laughs> Does that make sense? Now, I know some of you are thinking, oh, Pastor Doug, what you're saying is true, but I've already hurt my body so much. Is it too late for me? No. You come to him wherever you are. You start following these principles. You'll all, there'll always be benefit. I've even known some people that were declared terminal that began to follow some of the basic health principles, and they've been healed from incredible diseases because your body suddenly can, can do things. It'll prolong your tranquility, if nothing else. And so follow the principles. You'll always be better off. You'll feel better. You'll think better. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The Bible says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he will also reap. Anything you get addicted to isn't good for you. Have you ever seen somebody in there? They're saying, what's the matter? I've got to have a banana. Quick. <laughs> they, don't, they don't ever have the shakes because they, you never catch your husband getting up and going to the refrigerator and say, honey, what's wrong? Well, I'm just making a little pilgrimage. What are you doing? Well, I just, I, I really felt like some Brussels sprouts. <laughs> no, they don't do that. They don't migrate to the refrigerator in the wee hours and look around and eat lettuce. Do they? We, we get addicted to things that are bad for us. What should every sincere Christian, Bible-believing Christian, endeavor to do at once? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So just give them your body. Say, Lord, I want to be yours, not only my heart and my soul, but my body. And I'm going to do my best to take care of it. Every man strives for mastery. He's temperate in all things. Now, some things I mentioned tonight, you got like traffic signal. You got red light, you got yellow light, you got green light. Some things are just plain old red light. I don't believe you should drink any alcohol. I don't believe you should ever smoke any cigarettes. Not a little cigarette smoking is good for you. None of it's good for you. It's a red light. Some things would be a yellow light. You know, if you're going to eat meat, it's got to be the clean meats. Don't eat too much. And same thing with dairy products. By the way, you don't get cholesterol from anything but animal products. And so you want moderation in those things that are permitted. And then the green light, fruits, grains, nuts, vegetables. But even that, you don't want to eat too much. Be temperate. Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. I'm worried about some of my evil habits. They hold me so tightly. What can I do? The Bible says, as many as receive him, to them he gives power to become the sons of God. Bible promises I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Do you believe that, friends? Hey, I'll tell you, he's made big changes in my life. And what I'm teaching you now, I have been following for 30 years. I've been a vegetarian for 30 years. I'm not going to do it tonight, but usually during a presentation like this, I do a backflip. Well, I haven't done that for two years, and you don't want me to fall on my head. And by the way, I heard here in Sydney the ambulance response time is not very fast. And so I thought, I better not do that. I did do a handstand earlier today just to see if I could still do one. But I'm not even going to do that. You believe me, don't you? Anyway, friends, I just want you to know that uh, God cares about you. Your body, soul, spirit. It's not just spiritual. He cares about your bodies. There's a lot of truth in the word. You'll feel better. You'll live longer. You'll think clearer. Uh, how many of you would like to have that and present your bodies a living sacrifice? Creating delicious and healthy meals is now easier than you think. Are you ready to learn the eight Bible secrets for a longer and stronger life? Well, these tasty recipes will take you into the heart of homes where best memories are made. 
the kitchen while making sure you stay out of the doctor's office. Explore Chef Michelle's favorite dishes from around the world while learning the secrets to making heart-healthy food taste great. Call the number on your screen to order your copy completely free of charge, or mail us at Amazing Facts Ministries, P.O. Box 449, Creston, B.C., V0B1G0. Bon appétit! Did you know that Noah was present at the birth of Abraham? Okay, maybe he wasn't in the room, but he was alive and probably telling stories about his floating zoo. From the creation of the world to the last day events of Revelation, BibleHistory.com is a free resource where you can explore major Bible events and characters, enhance your knowledge of the Bible, and draw closer to God's Word. Go deeper. Visit the amazing Bible timeline at BibleHistory.com. Have you ever had questions in life and not known where to turn for answers? Have you ever at times felt there's something missing in my life, I just don't feel fulfilled, but weren't sure what to do about it? Perhaps right now is a great opportunity for you to look at the Bible for answers in life. Millions have found direction, peace, and comfort in studying the Bible, and right now, you have an opportunity to know God's Word. We would like to invite you to take this opportunity to study God's Word right in the comfort of your own home. These beautifully illustrated study guides will reveal the answers to many of life's greatest questions. So contact us with the information on your screen to order your own set of free Bible study guides. Amazing Facts, through your faithful support, has had a major impact on some of the largest non-Christian locations in the world. Beyond the Great Wall, the printing and translation of our books and video materials are in constant motion. The Amazing Facts Chinese language website is now one of our most visited websites. We also translated thousands of pieces of literature for these nations. What started out as hundreds of followers is now in the hundreds of thousands. The impact of your funds invested in sharing the everlasting gospel in these foreign lands will be felt for years to come. You know, every week we hear the most incredible stories from all over the globe of lives that are being changed and hearts that are being transformed by the power of the Word. And none of it could happen without your teamwork with this ministry. God bless you. Because God's message is our mission, we appreciate your contributions that make this possible, great or small. So, donations can be made out to Amazing Facts Ministries by using the information on your screen. Donors will receive a tax-deductible receipt. So give us a call or visit our website where you can find a great selection of programs on our many Bible topics. And join us each week for our Bible-based broadcasts. Thank you so much for your support. This is your opportunity to take advantage of this week's special offer. Just call the toll-free number on your screen and be sure to note the offer number when you make the request.